<laughs> I'm hopeless with this. Does he get my quad bike in the thing? No, I've got the edge of the chair there. Out across the dam. Yep. And the goats. All right, one person watching. Let's just double check. I've clicked on allow chat this time. Is it working? It's still not letting me do it. Oh, six minutes ago. Here we go. Oh, seriously, just not today. Okay, so bring that up. Oh, culpable. Yes, Ross Leak, the Skyquake Warrior. Welcome, everyone. How are you today? Now, let's just check the volume. Oh, culpable. Hey, Lowy, how are you, mate? Thank you very much for re... Oh, you made it home safe. Awesome. Johnny Bear T, how are you? Aussie Welsh. Thanks, everyone. We've got 10 people in here already. Excellent. Thank you very much for coming in. So, what we're doing today, okay, is we're at a friend's property in the southwest of the state, okay? And what we're going to be doing is some marining. Now, what it is, the marin season doesn't start till the 8th of January, okay? But friends of mine have a uh, wholesale license. They've got an order to fill, so I asked them if I could come down and help them, if they would let me um, like do some live streaming and marining on their farm. So it's all worked out well for everyone. So what I'll do is I'll muck around with the snares until it gets a little bit darker, and then we're just going to belt around with nets and scoop nets, but I won't be um, live streaming that because uh, friends will be in that later, okay? So look, hope everyone's well. Um, what we're going to do is we're going to start by showing you how to marin, okay? So look, you can usually tell if someone's come down from the city, right, because they're wearing their sort of like, uh, you know, uh, the lifesaver speedos, right? And they grab a heap of chicken feed and they prance down to the water's edge, you know what I mean? And then they just throw it as far as they can in the water. Totally just waste your time, okay? So, when you're fishing for marin, okay, because technically it is fishing, okay, see this? This is the same laying pellets that I made the burly with on the other video. So I'm going to show you how to turn a $3.40 bag of laying pellets into about $300 worth of marin. This is how we do it. So what you want to do, okay, is you want to get the marin to come to you. You don't want to go to them. So, you know, it's tough enough that this it is to get them. What I'm going to do is I'm just going to put a handful of these pellets, right? So what you want to do is you want to clump them together in the water, right on the edge. Okay, so what will happen is the marin will come in here. You'll be standing there with your snare. As they go to shoot off, you put it over their tail and you hook them, and I'll show you how to make those in a second, right? So let's just get down to this clear area, and hopefully with the powers of technology, okay, what I can do is I can show you how to snare some. Right, so... All I've got here is just a handful of chook pellets, right? You don't want to spread them out. All you want to do is just dump them right on the edge like that. Okay, and that's it. And then what will happen is they will start to break down in the water. Hopefully the goats don't come back because it's a bit bigger than me. And it's got a tougher forehead, so I'm stuffed either way. Right. And then what we'll do here now is what I'm going to do is I'm going to take a bit of a risk because it's still a little bit early for the marin, but what we'll do is, we'll grab a seat, eight, no. Okay, great. <laughs> hey, Johnny Bear, hey, MW, out. Don't even think about it. <laughs> Go on. Yeah, this is one goat that is not gonna be the greatest of all time. Yeah, I've eaten a lot of goat, do you get what I'm saying? Right. <laughs> Right, so what we've done here, okay, is we've got the chicken pellets. They're right on the edge of the water, okay, and I've just done a little handful, so it's just a little amount like that. That's right the way along, and then hopefully before dark, 
okay, the marin will start coming in and we can provide some content. Now, a lot of people spend a lot of money, okay, on torches to go marining. Do yourself a favour, do what I do. I went to Woolies, 15 bucks with the batteries, right? It's a little mini dolphin torch with the um, LED light. That's more than enough to go marining with. You know, I've seen people with $150, $200, are they met Metzels, Mets or whatever, okay? And um, all you're doing is just really just spending a lot of money on something that may not necessarily make your job any easier. Now, with um, your torches and that sort of stuff, you've got to remember you have your main beam and then you have like a little halo around it. When you do it, you shine your torch, I won't waste the battery, across the water. And what will happen is you'll probably get to about here and the halo will highlight the water enough with a dim light so you can see their outlines in the water. So here's going to be a little bit difficult because we've got leaves and weeds and that sort of stuff. But what I'm hoping is what we can do is I can get one to come in here in this light section and I can show you how to snare it in the light, okay? So the next thing is we need to make some snares and hope that this goat doesn't come back. How the hell did you manage to do that? Hey, look at it. <laughs> Great. So what we're going to do, right, is this is a marin snare. Okay, now remember in our videos and live streams, all views that I show you are purely my own, right? So if you have a better way, just uh, contact us on the email and show us. But um, I've got a friend of mine, Michael. Michael's a bogan. And Michael's my size and he can snare anything. He can snare marin, he can snare trout, he can snare perch, he can snare anything, right? And this is his design, you've got to give credit where it's due. So basically what these are, right, these are 13 mil fiberglass poles from Elders that they use on the electric fencing and that sort of stuff. And then what we do is we just use a little bit of um, plastic coated wire that we crimp one of these locking is it a cabana or whatever it's called? Some cable ties and a little bit of five minute arrow diet and you're done. So I'll show you how to do that. So what I'm gonna do is just change the angle on that there. Just give me a second. Let's get that sorted. I uh, will be able to see the marin in the water. Right, that's good. I need to get that battery up. Let me recharge that. Okay, so one of the important things that you've got to do is you've got to use the correct poundage wire. Either 80 or 100 pound. Um, we use Halco here. We're West Aussies. We support West Australian companies. So we use Halco seven strand nylon coated stainless steel lock weld wire. But we crimp it with the, um, well, these are a size too big, but we'll make it work, right? With the Halco crimps. 80 to 100 is usually the um, best poundage to use because it doesn't perish like lighter uh, weights. On top of that, okay. You're going to need these stainless steel snap and locking carabanas. This is important later on because what this does is it gives you a point that you can anchor your wire on, but I'll show you that in a second, okay? And then on top of that, obviously, we need the right size cable ties, which we should be able to do with, um, yeah, they're not playing the game today, right? I, um, excuse me, do you want to, oh, yeah, just, um, I can't put them in there, so, okay, <laughs> whoops, oh, she, that's right, oh, beautiful, oh, no, they didn't get in there anyway, that's okay, excellent, yeah, 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 just, just, like, sort of across here, all right, so, what we've got, um, here is these, uh, little cable ties, right, Okay, 
And then, on top of that, we just need some five minute araldite, okay, to glue it all and to seal it. So first things first, what we're gonna do is this, right? Okay, so what we need to do, right? is we need to get the correct position, okay, of the carabana hook here, right, like so. And what you do is you just use three or four cable ties to keep that on there, okay? Now, what we'll do is we'll take some of these out, like so, like that. Here we go. So what we're gonna do now is we're just going to cable tie one of these on so that it holds it in place and then we're going to get it in the right place and lock it in. You just put four of them in through the hook or however many you can fit really like that. Right, there we go. So that's one. And see how it stays perpendicular like that? That's another thing that you have to do. But anyway, we've got one in there. Let's get two. three, and another one, four. Okay, so what this is gonna do now is that's gonna lock it in place. And what we've done is we've got that perpendicular to that. And that is basically how we're gonna set it up so that we can start snaring our marin and that sort of stuff. I can actually fit one more in here, which I will do. And we just wanna get that fairly tight. These are quite small cable ties. And the good thing about using um, Araldite as well to seal it is if one of them snaps from sunlight or overuse, then you've still got the others to hold it in place. Right. So, right, so that's basically what's happened now. We've got them all in place, right? What I'll do is I'll super glue that and then we'll figure out the correct loop, okay? Okay. Stay. <laughs> yeah, I can't show the go to curry pot. <laughs> Great. So what we've done now is the locking carabana we've got on there. Let's get that right, I'll do the other one, and then we'll glue it on. Yeah, something like that, Ross. Let's go in here. Okay, so there you go. What we've done is we've got six little, um, cable ties on there, that's holding that in place. And then what we'll do is we'll glue them separately. And um, that way we'll just use slightly bigger um, cable ties on in here. So, just having a look, Bamo. A few fish have turned up, but no marin have turned up. So give it five or six minutes. On a farm like this, because they're not in rivers and that sort of stuff, and they're not really used to predators, they should come up before nightfall, but usually when you go marining, you do it at night, okay? All right, hey, Patch, how are you, mate? Now, what I'm gonna do is, I'm gonna use slightly big cable ties now, and thanks very much to the 15 people that are watching, okay? 
we're just going to get this all sorted and I'm going to show you how to do this um, little marining stream. Okay. Now, nah, actually, yeah, I'll actually stick with the small ones, I think. They should be okay. Right, let's get a couple more. And then what we can do is, um, yeah, just make a few more, um, let's make a few more, um, we'll just make another couple of um, snares. And then that way the bait should kick in, I hope. So let me put these away. Mm. Now, where's the other one? Okay. So once again, right, what we want to do is get this perpendicular to this. So the hardest thing is getting the first one on, right, which we'll do. Okay, now remember people, the marin season doesn't open until the 8th of January. Okay, I'm here at a friend's property helping him out with a wholesale order. So then that way, you know, it gives me an opportunity to provide this content. And as you can tell by the surrounding um, Wildlife noises, they do have a lot of livestock on this farm and it's really good to get back to nature and reality, you know. I miss living on a farm, it's all good fun. So, let's get down here. Now, when you snare Marin, what you've got to do is you've got to press the loop down behind them, right, and flatten it out a bit. Put the torch in front of the marin just a little bit and guide it so that it reverses into the snare and then you lift it up. When you lift up the snare, okay, you don't lift it up with a really quick action. What you do is just do it with an arm action and hold it and you try not to bounce your hand because if you bounce your hand, the loop will open and you'll lose the marin, okay? Hey Steve, you're at Pinaroo Point. Ooh. That's beer drinking country, don't you reckon? Hey? In this sort of heat. Rightio. So, and thanks to that new technology that we invested in, fam, we're able to live stream from more and more remote locations. Right, so uh, I've got another big stream turning up probably in uh, April, and um, I'm hoping that we can get that one to work with this technology because that will be really good for us. Um, it's in a fairly remote beach in the southwest of the state. Okay. Steve, how are you, mate? Welcome, bud. And thanks for the support, people. Good to see you all tuning in. Now, I've been taking a little bit of a hiatus from the streaming because it's Christmas and I've got work and that, but next year, the aim next year is we want to put a 1,000 videos on YouTube in the year, fam. Right, so look forward to lots of content. Culpable, probably. Yeah, culpable, don't rock backwards and forwards and slap yourself, because it will happen. <laughs> right. Right. Now. Great. So what I've done here, right, I've got those um, perpendicular there. That's going to form a little bubble on top, then we'll coat these. So what I'm going to do now is I'm just going to um, cut these as close as I can to it. Come on. There we go. Oops. Don't want the goat to eat that. Even though they can eat anything. Right, okay. So. Yeah, Merry Christmas to you too, Steve. Yeah, hey, Scotty. I hope everyone had a Merry Christmas and I hope you have a good New Year, fam. Okay? And you don't have too much of a hangover. All right. So, basically, what's happened is we're going to get this. Right, see how that is? Okay, to this. So basically what we've done now is we've got this self-locking carabana in. Right, let's put this aside. I'm just gonna check if any marin have come up, so. Uh, there's actually one just there, oh, whoops. There's actually just one out here, just out of reach. 
Yeah, the only problem is as it gets darker, they start to come into the edge of the shore. And uh, hopefully with these chicken pellets, they'll come in really close. All right, famo. So, now that we've got this, Sorry about that, mate. I actually figured out how to do it on the phone for the first time in six months. <laughs> All right. <laughs> so. Okay. So now what we're going to do, because we've got those locked in, what I'm going to do now is I'm actually going to use one of the packets of um, uh, crimping like wire and that. Okay, I'm just going to mix up a little bit of super glue with this. Where's me? Uh... Oh, is this like one dose? Surely not. Oh, I think it is. Yep, it sure is. That's not good. But anyway, we'll figure it out. Oh, hang on. Okay, there we go. Yeah, Stephen, just chicken pellets, mate. The $3 chicken pellets from Coles. That's all you need, bud. So many people try and complicate it. You know, oh, you need this and dead animals and that you don't. Right. So what I've got here, okay, is I've got my first little mix of um oh. <laughs> yes don't go all analytical on me culpable so what i've done is i'm just mixing a little bit of this um lock tight five minute arrow diet like this i probably could do with a thicker cable tie oh dear Right, now you've got to remember people, we're doing this live off the cuff, right? So, if we do mistakes, so be it, at least it's real. So what I've done is I've mixed the aerodite for one of the snares, right? I'm going to bring that in here, like so, Oops. and show you how to do it. What you do is once aerodite starts to mix, it gets hot and um, it'll start to like go quite marbly. Now this is the clear stuff, so this is like professional stuff, right? What you gotta do, it's a little bit like when we tie our flies and that sort of stuff. Right, bring that in here, bring that in here, like so. Right, just mix it around in here a bit. Get it all up and down there, like so. Probably haven't got enough of this actually, but we'll just mix up a bit more. We'll just leave that in here now. Right, let me get that in there. Yeah, you, you never make enough because if you make too much, you know. But we actually pretty close, really. Okay. Chuck that in there. Right, so now what you've got to do is you've got to learn to dance with the aerodite. Right, so see how that's like dripping and moving around. What I want it to do is just basically coat everything. Come on, get in there. Where gravity can be your friend or your enemy in this case, I think we're going to need a little bit more aerodite on here. Right, so let me just uh, mix that through here, like so in there. There we go. Actually, that's not too bad. You've got to remember fiberglass doesn't absorb water. That's why they make boats out of it, I guess. Mind you, they do crack when they're in there. So now what we're going to do is hold that in there. Normally what we do is we do one thing of aerodite the first time, and then we do another one over the top just to finish it off. So I should have enough left in here, right, like that. Let me just put that same little um, 
thing on there. All right, let's do another little bit. Yeah, that's good. Great. So I'll put that away. Uh, no, I haven't, because they're up north, Steve. I'm down in the southwest of the state with what we're doing today, and I haven't sort of camped enough up north to get into the Cherubin. They're actually five-star reading, but a lot of people use them as barramundi bait. So, righty -o. Right, so this is the final piece of um, aerodite. It's going to work its way down here. Nice, come on, let's go, don't be naughty. Right, so, yep. So let's just mix this around here, put some around the back of it. That way the cable ties always leave a little bit of a mohawk. Rightio. Nice, there we go. So that's the first one just about done, Fermo. Excellent. You've got to remember too, when you're mixing aerodite, if you've got aerodite on there already and it's finishing, right, it'll actually generate a lot of heat. Okay, and when it generates a lot of heat, it's actually very hard to, um, it's very hard to like um, stop the uh, new one that you've put on from curing as this one already has. So let's get that in there. Yep, it's already gone jelly-like. That's okay. Nice, good work. That's the first one done, excellent. All right, so what I'm gonna do is, I'm just gonna leave that on the chair, that's ready to rock. So what you do here uh, now, there we go. Right, we'll keep that on there. The aerodite actually holds it in place. The last thing you need is for that to turn while you're trying to get a marin on, you know? All right, so. The other good thing about the Marin 2, right, is when you put when you put a handful down like that at night when you've got low visibility, right, what happens is when the Marin put their claws over them and feed, you'll actually see the silhouette of the Marin over the pellets. It just helps you out a little bit, okay? So, you know, obviously, if it was night time, we'd have a lot more of them coming up, but it's still daylight, it's still a little bit early, okay? Um, that's good. Probably about the next half hour. I mean, in a perfect world, they'll start coming into the baits just as we're finishing that other one, you know? <sighs> yeah, I don't know whether they can be farmed, Steve. Right. Now, let's go to here now. All right, what I'm going to do is I'm going to do a big clump of aerodite now. All right, get it all on there in one hit. Come on. We're going to do an absolutely massive one and just fill it all in one go. That's all the aerodite done. Right. Beautiful. Yeah. <laughs> You're not wrong, Steve. <laughs> you can tell you're a West Australian, mate. You know how marining works. The best laid plans in the world, you know. None of them turn up. You fall asleep half drunk, and at 2 a.m. when you wake up and then turn the torch on, and they're everywhere, you know what I mean? <laughs> I put some in the sink one year in the kitchen when I was uh, in my old place, and I woke up in the morning to a marin on the carpet trying to nip me fingers. <laughs> Whoops. So hang on, I'm just going to put some um, aerodite on this. Right. Actually, should be able to pour this on, I think. Let's go on for the pour on method. Why not? All right, famo. So, oops. This is what we're going to do. We're going to pour this aerodite on here. Okay. Get on there, sunshine. Good. Now, that got most of it, which is good. Now, get in there.
There we are. Nice. So, basically what we have now is we have all the aerodite on here. Right, we're just going to send it straight back down to the top of the pole here. Right, we're just going to try and cover where these cable ties are in here. Right, like so. That's going to be very handy. Come on. I wondered where I put that. Right, that's going to be very handy now. So, let's just clean that to there. Good. Brilliant. Always handy to have a spare towel somewhere. All right, there we go, famo. So what's happened is now all the aerodite is just uh, working its way around the cable ties. I'm not playing the flute there, right? That's good. And now what we have is we have the locking carabana perpendicular, right, to the fiberglass pole. So that's good. Goats sound so sad, don't they? Like... <laughs> oh, nice one, John. How are you, mate? Welcome, buddy. All right, that's good. So this is better than the other one that I made because this actually has some araldite on it. Right, nice. Okay, good work. Now we'll just let it dry. Okay, famo. So, it's a couple of shapes out a bit deeper. Once we um, let that dry, Fitzroy Seafood Platter, Barramundi, Salt, crock, fillet, and cherubin. <laughs> nice. Okay. I hope they come down this end of the dam tonight, eh? <laughs> They're probably sitting about six foot out going, not him again. Remember what happened to George last time he was here? <laughs> Sorry. If it's any consolation, George tasted really good. <laughs> yeah, don't become friends with the livestock. I'm telling you, it's just a trap. Rightio, so. <laughs> Oops, stay. All right, give me a second, Pam. Just going to have a drink of water and hydrate because it's hot. Stinking hot day today. 37 degrees. And what we'll do is, when these marin come in, Right, provided they do come in. What we'll do is I'll zoom in on the water's edge and you should be able to see them, okay? That's good, it's just a question of time now. Might be a bit hard to see them. All right, let's put that there. Thanks to the 17 people that are in here watching. Thanks for giving up your time to come in. All right, so. Okay. So now these are glued in, fam. What I'm going to do, right, is I'm going to show you how to make the loops to load your snares with this, okay? While these are drying, I'll show you the old ones we've got. So... Loops are quite simple. Right, so let me show you how this one works. Right, you unscrew that there. Come on. I used to be able to unscrew these. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> yeah, that's not getting slaughtered or anything, it's just saying hello to mum. <laughs> that other bit's about, I don't know, what, six months down the track or something? Right. <laughs> I 
Love them. All right. Let's get on the screw this one, fam. Give me a second. That is a classic example why a goat has never had a top 100 hit, mate. <laughs> oh, that's right. I tightened these up with pliers last time. Bit of a silly move, really. Here we go. All right, Famo. <laughs> okay, Fam. So... The snares are really simple, right? They're about 30 centimetres in length. You just have two loops on either end. And then what you do is you just allow that and you lock that into on the um, caravan. I'll show you how. So, wants to go fishing, something like that. Yeah, that's me. Right. So what we'll do is we'll get some 80 pound wire for starters. Rightio. Okay, I'll get some crimps. You only need two, and like I said to you famo, right, don't make the mistake um, of thinking that you've got to spend massive dollars to be able to make marin snares, right? So, and remember, the season doesn't start till the 8th of January. I'm lucky that um, friends have asked me to come and help them on their farm. So we get the opportunity to come in and provide a bit of content. Right? Otherwise, we wouldn't be allowed to do it. So what we do is, and it's quite simple, what we want to do is just make a little loop here at the end. Right? Now, Marin aren't too heavy, so you don't really have to worry about reinforcing it. But this um, uh, crimp that I've got is way too big. Right. So what I'm going to do is, now remember on crimps, if you crimp right on the edge, you'll cut the wire. And I have seen that happen with the, like the marin of a lifetime. So what we do is we just crimp that, okay, in between, not on the edge, and it won't cut it like a knife, all right? Now I need to get rid of this. And this. There we go. Yeah, see Scotty, that's the problem, mate. If you use if you use the um telephone line, yeah, they are a bit thin, and when they crimp in that being copper, right, you will have grease. Uh, grease, grief, right? This is 80 pound nylon coated Halco wire, the seven strand. We found this to by far to be the best thing to use for Marin, okay? I'll show you why in a second. I mean, 80 pound is what they use on most um, like rigs, you know, and they get Spanish mackerel with that, so marin will be easy. Let's cut that there. All right, fam, so we've made the loops. Okay, all you do is you put that through there, so that's your snare. Okay, and then what you do is you feed that through the locking eye on the caravana. Right, put that through here, like so, obviously making sure the loop's big enough to go over the caravana. And then what you do is you lock it down. Okay, there we go. Beautiful. So what I have is I have my snare locked in here on the base. That pulls straight through that eyelet, which is my anchor point. And then what I do is when I drop that down behind the marin like that and it flares out, you shine the torch, the marin puts its tail through there and then you snare it, see? And you can do 
Oh, you can do 20 or 30 snares with this and you'll still be able to use it straight after. And that's 80 pound Halco um, nylon strand wire, okay? So, let's see if this works. I still think it's too light for them actually. And it's the same old story, the great Australian tradition of snaring, right? And one of the great Australian feeds is um, beer and marin in the bush. So what will happen is if the marin comes in, like I said, you're shining the torch, that goes down the bottom, boom, and you lift it up and you snare it. But we've just got to wait for him to turn up now. That's the first one that we've done. Right, that's actually probably a bit big, but the marin in here sort of average about 500 grams, which is pretty big. And um, the minimum legal size, I think, in the trophy dams is 90 mil on the carapace from the crown to the joint of the carapace. And in this neck of the woods, it's 80, but we wouldn't be keeping anything um, that small when they, once they come in. Rightio. So let's push this back here. Nice. Let's make a few while we're here. Well, Scotty, it's the best thing to use. Think about it, mate. Right, one of the biggest problems with copper is, um, it, yeah, it just, it'll always grip. This is nylon coated, matey. So what'll happen is, um, you know, yeah, you buy, like we, I mean, we buy 10 metres of, um, like copper, not copper, the, this like nylon coated stuff, mate. And it lasts you four marin seasons, you know, unless you go every night, but then you're not meant to, you know what I mean? So, what we'll do here now. <laughs> yeah, I do, Scotty. I think, um, I think carapace, I reckon, look, mate. Even the ducks are laughing at me. They go, not him again, he's hopeless. So... Yeah, we'll get you to drink real beer over here, John. You'll be right, mate. Right. Yeah, when I worked in a bottle shop years ago, when people had come in and order Emu Export, I used to say to them, sorry, mate, but we've run out of axe handles and the special stubby singlets. Because, <laughs> yes. What I'll do, famo, is when the marin season starts properly, I'll take the new um, signal set up to a couple of remote spots that I've got on the Warren River here. The Warren River, where I normally go, is probably twice the width of this, okay, and a magnificent spot, and it's got a, a rock face that slants down into the water. Really good for marining, okay? Oh, it's a bit tacky, nearly as tacky as my jokes, Mark. <laughs> Nothing's that tacky, uh, anyway. <laughs> so, now, right, come on. Let's put a new snare on this. Yeah. Okay, there we go. Excellent. So, let me show you how to load this in this little snare that we made. This is one of the old ones, right? So, just put one loop through the other one, like so. Right, put that through the eyelet. Bring that down through here. Okay. Chuck that on there. Lock the um, carabana loop again. Ta-da! 
and there's your loop fam. Now see how that sits perfectly too, right? That'll sit perfectly in the water like that, okay? Yeah, nothing's coming up, mate. The water might be a bit hot, mate. Uh, let's see if there's one in here. And I'll be straight up with you, fam. There is nothing like the sight of a monster marin crawling up to a bait while you're looking at it that tends to make you question your existence, if you know what I mean. Because if you miss it, you'll never hear the end of it from your mates, right? And if you do get it, you know, you're a bit of a legend, if you know what I mean. So, uh, yeah, they usually, they usually tend to sort you out, you know. Right, and see what I mean, Scotty, about this um, Halco wire? Look at that. Boom. And see how it goes straight back into the correct position? Right, you can almost self-tension these so you can do three or four marin at the same time, you know? Yep, still flashing, <laughs> making its mind up. So what I'm going to do, fam, is I'm just going to stand here nice and steady, right, and just wait for a marin to turn up. One of the best assets you can have when you go marining is patience, okay? If you don't have patience, you probably won't do too well as a mariner, all right? Um, I like to use nets, but the only problem is the nets that I'm accustomed to using. In the old days, all the nets were made from mesh, you know, like the net making material. Nowadays, it's got a metal bottom and the marin don't like it. So, and they're a lot smaller too. <laughs> so, and like I said, famo, this isn't necessarily the right or the wrong way to do it, but this is how we do it. And we've been, you know, snaring marin for a really long time. And um, the other snare, or this one that I made here, right, this is about five years old. Okay, and I'm still using it. So these ones here, they're just spares, if you know what I mean. So. Once the marin come in, famo, what I'm going to do is I'm going to angle the camera down and I'm going to zoom into the water, okay? Okay, so what I'm going to have to do now is I've brought my Oztent gecko chair, right? Oh, and Scotty, let's face it, mate. Any little bit of advantage you can get to help with your marining, bud, right? It just, um, it just makes life easy. Well, Scotty, the other thing is too, mate, when you've got the big moss backs, okay, it's usually, um, I mean, marin and salinity are sort of uh, not something that go hand in hand. So, for example, I think it's about 100 parts per million salt before they start to sort of drop, stop, drop their reproduction, is it? Yeah, because I'm doing some reach. I think it's about 100 milligrams per thousand or whatever it is. But, yeah, and usually when you have the moss backs, you usually don't have too many others. And they're just really old marin, you know, um, that have been around for a long time. So. Hey, Mike, hey, welcome to the stream, mate. So what I'm going to do, famo, is I'm just going to stand here and I'm just going to wait for them to turn up. All right, that's all you can do. That's how marining works. And I think once the sun drops down behind the trees over here, then this water will um, sort of uh, get a lot darker in colour, right? Um, and then we'll get the torch out and see how we go. You probably won't be able to see them then, right? So what they'll do is, I mean, um, 
they're probably hanging in the edge of the shade here. Right, we need this shade to come in a bit before they come into the baits, but we'll figure it out. Hello, mate. Where's she? Yeah, she's over there. No. <laughs> no culpable. Everything does not revolve around a night out. Okay? <laughs> One starts, they all start. Star of the show, that goat. Okay. Excuse me, people. I just had a drink of water. Alrighty, famo. So, the only thing we can do now is sit and wait. That's marinating. Oh, have you? <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah, we've all done it. So. Now, remember, when you um, snare marin, you put your snare out first and you just rest it just above the water. Put your torch out over the water and just as the little glow from the main beam hits the water, just try and spot the shapes of your marin in there, okay? Hello, Mr. B. Righty, let's have a look. Yeah. Oh, I think there's one just in here. I just saw a little bit of dust move, so they could be hanging just on the edge of the shade there, okay? So let's just wait and see what happens. Although knowing my luck, there's probably been a heap of poachers in here the night before, eh? Hey! <laughs> Merry Christmas and a Happy New Year, Sharksmith Angling. How are you, mate? We're doing a uh, uniquely West Australian experience today. It's called marining. So marin are a giant freshwater crustacean that live in our waters here in WA. On the east coast, they have a giant um, crustacean as well. And what we do is uh, we make snares, all right? And with the snares, what we do is we use the snares to um, catch them by the tail because they grow that big. So, okay. Excellent. Rightio. These two have stopped being as tacky as my jokes. Let's chuck that in there. Right. What I'm going to do, Famo, right, is I'm going to plonk my seat down here, right, like so. And what I'm going to do is I'm just going to wait for a marin to turn up. This is what you do, okay? So you'll sit down, you wait. Oh, that's not registering, is it? You know, you wait for a marin to turn up, then you go and snare it. Well, that's the plan anyway, you know? So what I'm going to do, I'm just going to put my hat on, because I've got my hair. Not him again, that's what they're saying. All right. Uh.
All right, fam, so this is what you do. You just sit here and you wait. I'll bring my torch down. All right. And as soon as we have one turn up, okay, I'll try and snare one for you. Yeah, that's... <laughs> Oh, don't worry, culpable. I'm feeling it as well, mate. I'm hot too. Sorry. Okay. So. Working a week, eh? Oh, well, this is what we try and do on here, Ross. You know, we're lucky today. Look, the marin normally come out at night, and we're just going to try and get some before nightfall. And um, if not, what I'll do is I'll put the tripod here, and then I'll show you what we do when we snare them, okay? Hopefully the camera will focus. But the, there are plenty of them in here. It's just a question of finding them, you know? Oh, <laughs> and if we have to sit here till, if we have to sit here till, you know, seven o'clock or eight o'clock, it's 5.30. I mean, they should start coming in about six to 6.30 and we've got all the baits in. So the baits have broken down. So by the time this shade comes across the dam, probably in about the next 15 minutes, then we'll start getting them to come through, and then I'll show you how to catch them. But we've made our snares. We've got some new snares on here, right? Now, these marin are a bit bigger, so the distance of the point there to the bottom of the snare is about four inches. And you've got to remember, with a marin's tail, a marin's tail fans out like that. So it's not this bit you've got to get in, it's the others, you know? And you can tell when a marin's been caught before because they'll tuck the tail in, right? That way you can't get them, so. Let's just sit down and just enjoy the day, enjoy the view. Right, sorry for spoiling it by being in it. And then we'll just work from here. So. I'm actually quite shocked that none have turned up already. <laughs> you know, we've got enough bait out. The other thing you can do with marin is you can wade for them, right? But I don't want to do that just yet. And I've actually had a marin in this dam that was that big, right? Oh, yeah, they're awesome, Ross. Thanks for sharing that, mate. The marin came around like that and reached around my heel and went thunk, and I just about hit the roof, even though there wasn't one, you know what I mean? And um, yeah, all good fun. Now you've got to be very, very quiet, like Elmer Fudd quiet when it comes to marin, you know what I mean? Don't stomp through the water flat out because they can pick up vibration in the water from quite a distance away, and what they will do is they will just shoot off and you'll never see them again, all right? What I might do though, while we're here, I'm going to go and get some more baits and put them along the dam wall here where it's a bit deeper, right? And then that way it should bring a few more of them in. And then that way we've got another option later on, okay? So just bear with me for a second. Just enjoy the view, everyone. Right. Okay, and I'll be back in a second.
Yeah, well, that's right. I'm doing it here because we've got reception. And, you know, like, but they should come up here because, yeah, but, yeah, and with the shade, I mean, this is cooler. I couldn't put my hand in the water up there. It was so hot. Yeah. <laughs> we'll see. I probably just scared all of them. Oops. I hope not. All right, mate. All right, fair mate, we just have to wait now. All right. Huh? Oh, I have, I think. Oh, I'm brilliant, mate. Everyone else thinks I'm hopeless with technology, but I reckon I'm awesome. Isn't that right, Culp? This is a bit where he starts hitting himself and rocking backwards and forwards because I've said it so many times. Sorry, Culp. Right -o. Ah, they say patience is a virtue. Takashi, hello, my friend. How are you, bud? Oh, let's just sit down and relax, shall we? Why not, I say. Yeah, Merry Christmas and a Happy New Year, Takashi. I'm in Western Australia, mate. We're doing a bit of marining. I've just shown everyone how to make the snares that we use. Right, and now it's just a waiting game, Takashi. We have had uh, three really hot days. And what I'm doing here is I'm just gonna sit here with the snare out, I got my torch, and just chill out, you know? How was your Christmas, Takashi? Did you get a break? And what we do later is when we fill this order, we just use the um, scoop net and just, you know, get them out like that, weigh them up, fill out the docket, and then they're away. Yeah, you too, Takashi. Thanks for coming in, mate. Not now, goat. Yeah, we have had three hot days in a row, haven't we, Mark? 
We have had three hot days in a row, haven't we? Yeah, that's right. Oh, that's right, Takashi, you sure do. Thanks to the 24 people that have come in, fam. We've had no interruption in signal. This is great. I think that goat's flirting with me, mate. Because in the goat world, that's how they do it, don't they? <laughs> yeah, it is pretty quiet. John has that dark sense of humour, as they say, you know. <laughs> uh, <laughs> yeah, something like that, John. <laughs> oh. The other thing is too, people, nowadays we all forget how to relax. This is one of the best ways to relax, you know. Now that comment sounded like a comment from a person of experience there, John, eh? It's not even any small ones, mate. All right, Famo, what I might do, how solid's the bottom out there? Pretty good. Is and then it's solid? I might wait out and see if I can get one. Oh, Stephen, we all are, mate. This is the wonders with this new streaming setup that we have. Um, you know, we're able to share this experience, which is what we're doing, you know. We're all experiencing this together. So what I'll do is I'm going to go out for a little bit of a wade. <laughs> Don't even know why I bother having that, mate. It's the moths that keep it afloat. Right. Right. So what I'm going to do, famo, is I'm going to take the torch out in the middle. Right. I'm going to leave the chat here. Okay. Uh, and there's only two ways that I really know um, how to cook them. One is you get the water to the boil. So, you know, gallon of water, tablespoon of salt, bring it to the boil, chuck the marin in there, bring it to the boil, you time seven minutes, you take them off the boil, and then you dip them in iced water so they stop cooking in the carapace. The other way to do it is cut it down the middle of the um, tail of the marin and the head, wash it out, 
make up a nice garlic butter or whatever you want to put through it, the marin will absorb the flavour. And uh, yeah, it's a nice way to do it. So, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to go... Clean the water weeds there. It'll be shallower. Yep, okay. Yep, in here. Righty, uh, let's have a look to see if we can find one, Fimo. So, the other way to get marin, right, is you go for a wade. That's not that bright, actually, Mark. It's pretty good. Now, this water's fairly dark, so you've got to be pretty careful. Right. I was surprised. I thought with the LED it'd be like super, super bright. But, you know, yeah, I'm wearing them, mate. <laughs> now, the other thing is too, famo. see this. When I've stepped out in the water, see all these uh, concentric rings of water that I've formed? The marin will pick up on that vibration and they'll scatter. So anything 10 feet in front of you will disappear. So when you go in to do it, right, you've got to just go in. That goat's talking to me, right? Just very slow steps, one at a time like this, right? Don't stomp through the water like you're walking down Hay Street Mall or Ligon Street in Melbourne, you know what I mean? Just steady, steady, right? Nice small steps. So I'm already up to my, um, like nearly to my knees, right? Now, in the rivers and that sort of stuff with the sandy bottoms, You'll have more chance of seeing them. The water's uh, the same colour as the sunglasses here, but that's okay, right? Um, that's why you have the torch. And like I said, you just put the torch down where the glow is from it. You'll have your snare out first, right? And then hopefully you'll see the marin before it sees you. All right, so I'll go back out through here and we'll go back into here, all right? And then we'll just wait till sort of it gets... The shade gets across all this water, right, and then we'll just take it from there. They shouldn't be too far away, mate. <laughs> Something like that. Yeah. Ah. Uh. Goats are hilarious, mate. They're the funniest sounding animal, you know. That was actually not that hot in there. No, it wasn't too bad. You know it would be silly though, don't you? They're all climbing out from the other end where it's boiling and here where it's cool where we baited. Yeah, not him again. <laughs> Something like that, Kelp. Ah, uh, yeah, there's one, Mark. They just turned in sideways and backed out again, so they're coming in. Rightio, nice work. Hey? Oh, yeah, that's exactly right, mate. This is what you got to do, fam, eh? You just got to put in the time, you know? We've got everything right. Um, it has been a super hot day today, but it'd be under 30 degrees now, wouldn't it? Let's have a look. Twenty seven degrees feels like twenty five. That's not too bad, is it? That's right, we need to ask the Marin. But the minimum tonight's going to be 23. So, but, 
Yeah, but the water here won't be 25 degrees or 23 degrees. It'll be like, what, high teens, low 20s? The aeration system turns on at night anyway. Oh, yeah, beautiful. Lovely. Now, some other content that we're going to look forward to, famo, is I'm going to start making lures again. Um, when I do the VOD, I'm going to give you the name of this property. And, uh, yeah, the lures are banned from here. <laughs> I still remember the phone call. You know those lures you made and sold us? Yeah, don't bring them again. <laughs> okay, sorry. Sorry. And this is the same old story, fam. You're just going to wait for them to turn up. That's all you got to do. The other thing is, too, when you go to Marin on rivers and that, just try and keep an area to yourself. Don't put in baits over a massive area because you'll never be able to patrol it properly. If you know what I mean? A a lot of um, people, when they go marining, you know, it's like even the blue manna crabs. I've had friends that have gone out into the river and dropped blue manna crab nets down, and people have come along and dropped the their nets in between their nets. It's just rude, you know, but people still do it, you know what I mean? Hey there, Bamboozled. How are you, mate? Merry Christmas and a Happy New Year, Bam. Merry Christmas and a Happy T New Year to everyone in the community and in the stream. Oh, Scotty, isn't it just terrible, mate, you know? The other thing is, too, one of my pet hates is when you're one of two people in the... Like, there'll be a person, right, on the other side of the dam, right, way over there while you're... Um, scooping for blue manna and they walk over to where you are and try and scoop the blue manna that you're scooping and it's like mate can't you know there's so much water here you gotta come over here but no they don't care oh nice one you ran out of heating oil and saw five degrees oh Okay, Patch. Yeah, but Scotland doesn't count, Patch. Scotland, you know, four seasons in one day there, mate. Nah, Scotland does count. I love Scotland. Beautiful part of the world. Great. Not a single one on any baits. Well, that means we're going to have to wait for, until dark for them to turn up. Um, Stephen, they actually um, have a uh, lure now that when you um, put it in the water, what it does, it, it flashes red. Um, it's got like a chip in it with a positive and a negative electrode um, like just sticking out of the lure body. And when it get, gets wet, it forms the connection. So, <laughs> wow, it just jumped the fence. How can she jump a fence with an udder like that? Yeah. Patch, how does long does it take to get your oil in and that sort of stuff, mate? Because isn't that like uh, the worst thing that can happen with your heating in Scotland?
Is it? That's Celsius, isn't it? Oops. Bam, what we've got in Western Australia, we've got a giant freshwater crustacean called a marin. They can grow up to about three or four pounds in some instances. What's the biggest one? It was three pounds six, wasn't it? About that, three pounds six. And um, you can snare them with homemade snares that I've showed everyone how to use and make, sorry. So, oh, that must be a bit tough, Patch. Something like it, Steve. Um, Scotty, that's rubbish. You know, it, uh, nah, that's rubbish, mate. I don't know who says that. I don't know why people make that sort of stuff up, mate. That's just, yeah. Seriously, mate, she's walking around with a bouncy castle there. Unbelievable. I don't know how it jumped over the fence. The old boys in Collie. Yeah, let me put this to you, Scotty. What happens if one's standing on the other side of the river and he's left-handed? He's <laughs> still going to get Marin. <laughs> you know? Oh, bugger. Oh, that's right, Skyquake Worry. And you need heavy blankets, don't you? Okay, so most of the dam's covered in shade now. And there's actually a little bit of a cold breeze, isn't there? Have you tried goat's milk? It's an acquired taste. Sorry? Oh, that is hilarious. They'll climb anything, won't they? Great. Oh, sorry to hear that, Patch. Oh, I hear you, Scotty. Probably not a good idea to say that live on stream, mate. <laughs> In fact, I'll do you a favour. I'll just uh, remove that comment. Nice. Don't get offended by that, Scotty. Probably not a good idea to tell him your spots, mate. Yeah, well, yeah, you're right, mate. Oh, yeah, I know it's in season, mate, but, you know, got to have some secrets, Scotty. Hey? Oh, has it? Oh, they headbutting each other. Oh, it's only a handshake for goats anyway, mate. And for the first time in a while, I didn't bring my generator. Hey Sith, how are you bud? Welcome to the stream mate. I just want to get one before it gets too dark to um, live stream, you know. I didn't even think to bring me um, generator and lights because if you do that they just boom straight in the middle of the dam, don't they? How are you Sith? Merry Christmas and a Happy New Year buddy. <laughs> Thanks, Bam. 
Yeah, I just can't grab the like the concept of snow. You know, I had to go overseas and see it. Oh yeah, I hear you, Ant. We were at Big Brook one year, this guy grabbed this chalk and he drew these symbols on the bitumen and he goes, they're our spots. If we find you in our spots, we'll cave your head in. And we looked at him and went, mate, here's four Marin, bugger off. You know, like, who do you think you are? You know what I mean? No one owns the waterways. So. Oh, yeah. No, 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 they're for Marin, not for you. Come on, out you go. No, 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 nice try. Come on, out you go. Come on, out you go. Don't be doing that. I'm just going to check some of the other baits that I've put down. I'll be back in a minute, famo. Oh, yeah, that wasn't a rooster, luckily. <laughs> something like that something like that John alright so they managed to train the ducks over there Yeah, the thing. Oh, that's right. They do two patch. Hey. No. No. You can have them tomorrow after we've gone. Back over there. I've got Buckley's chance of this goat listening to me. No, don't. You don't eat plastic. You'll get sick. I'll have to pay for the bill. Go on. No. Over there. Yeah. That's a good sized goat, right there. Nathan, John, welcome bud. Merry Christmas and a happy new year, mate. Just trying to show everyone how to uh, get married. We've got a friends that have a uh, license on their property and they've got an order to fill. So I offered to come down and help them out if I could do some snaring to show everyone because the season doesn't start till the 8th of January. And uh, yeah, obviously they don't want to play because the camera's on.
I'm just going to check a couple of the other baits in the deeper water. I'll be back in a second, Pam. Oh no! <clears throat> Don't even think about it, ducks. Yeah, good call. They were heading straight for the feed. Well, let's show a little bit more patience. <laughs> Should be cool, yeah, marining. Yeah, not with the goat. That's never going to be the case. Marining with goats and lots of them. <laughs> yeah. This is a beautiful, idyllic setting, fam. This is what we get to do in WA here. I think WA is one of the last sort of frontiers in the world where you can go somewhere and not see anyone, you know? Um, Okay, Ross, thanks for tuning in, mate. <laughs> that was so funny. Yeah, they come up during the day, only you need a little bit of this and... <laughs> mate, it's, it's the streaming curse. You turn the camera on, right? Nothing. Turn it off and there'll be 50 of them lining up. Turn it on, they'll disappear again. Oh, yeah. Oh, oh, here comes the argument. <laughs> yeah, that's right. I keep forgetting you got a donkey. Yeah, well, three with me. Oh, a kookaburra just went down and grabbed something in the grass there. They don't take much, do they? Yes, it had a tail on it, that's for sure. Hey, that was a trout. There was a V in the water just underneath the surface. That's a trout. 
wasn't a little one either. Um, bam, there have been trout released in this water, but with a 35 degree day, we don't like to fish for them because they're usually down deep. And if you... <laughs> oh no. <laughs> Go to <are> us. <laughs> down on the farm. <laughs> Yeah, so what'll happen is you'll hook them down deep, bam, and then when you bring them into the top two or three feet of water, they, they literally cook and they don't recover too well, mate. Here comes the duck gang. Wah. <laughs> I've got the goats laughing at me. I've got the ducks laughing at me. I've got kookaburras laughing at me. <laughs> Not one? <laughs> wow. That's exactly right. Oh, that's all right, Mick. Thank you very, very much for tuning in, mate. Merry Christmas and a Happy New Year. <laughs> <You've>... <laughs> what are Nathan? <laughs> They're the good ones, right? Just simple, you know what I mean? Six words, laugh your head off. Do you think goats can sense when someone's eaten goat? If you know what I mean? Thanks for coming in, Mick. I've got enough bait in the water to bring in every marin from the dam. Seriously. Yeah. They've already spawned, haven't they? They should have done. They shouldn't be in berry. Haven't you? Really? Ever. And the one time you do, nothing. Oh, well, that's what we normally use. Because remember in the 80s, everybody used wheat. And then, and then they'd eat wheat and they'd crawl off and explode. 
Yeah, and then apparently we're down to about 16 or 17% of our original biomass from the 70s and 80s, just from overfishing and like habitat destruction, salinity in the waterways, etc., etc. So in a dam, you've got a better than even chance of getting them, you know? I mean, I don't know how we're going to fill your order, mate. <laughs> I was hoping to be home by 10 o'clock tonight. <laughs> it's not going to happen. It's always action packed on a farm, mate, isn't it? <laughs> yeah, revenge of the goats, all right. Even if it is the trash, right? That's right, mate, yeah. Never mind Revenge of the Goats, Revenge of the Marin. Uh, no, uh, our friends have already gone and checked it while we've been checking this end out, Colt. It's already sorted. Yeah, there's nothing on those either. Oh, don't worry, mate, we're on to it. But thank you very much for the su suggestion, Colt. A lot of people don't realise they're not native to WA. They're all lining up to laugh. Hey Mick. Thanks for that Colt. I can't really argue because he still has his hair. Um, and John here in WA, yabbies and that are introduced. A yabby that big can destroy a marin two and a half times its size just because of the way that they're made up with their claws and that. So... No idea why it's taking so long.
No good? <laughs> oh, no. All right, we'll hopefully get some. A healthy population occurs in a res reservoir in the morning in Mornington Peninsula. How do they get into the eastern states, mate? They are, they're unique to Western Australia. I haven't seen one so far. Normally they're up pretty early like this, aren't they? Mm. Yeah, it must be something. Hey, Big Larry Man, how are you, mate? Welcome to the stream, bud. How's life going? Now, Big Larry Man, are you in the States from memory? Are you in America? Hey, Jackson, how are you? I'm just going to shift this out. Not one. Yeah, the heat must have driven them deep, mate. We're going to have to wait later. Oh. Canadian. Sorry, I didn't mean that, Larry. Oh, hang on. We had a we had a Larry that tied flies with us as well. He was from the States. So, Merry Christmas and a Happy New Year, Lawrence. Good to see you in here, mate. Thanks for coming in. Make sure you tell everyone else that we're on here as well, man. Thanks very much for giving up your time to come in and watch. Larry? So fam, brushing up on the wire that we're using to make the marin snares, right? Uh, Halco seven strand nylon coated stainless lock world wire in 80 pound. All right, that's what we're using to make our marin snares. And the good thing about this, it's, it is as smooth as silk when you go and try and set the snare on a marin tail, okay? When I go through and edit the VOD, I'll publish what you need to make your marin snares and that sort of stuff, okay? We've already done that. These are the ones that we made live on stream. Okay, so they're set now. And I've used the white cable ties so that we know they're the new ones. And that's basically how you do it. You put your loop through there and then that's what you use to snare, fam, okay? Let me just shift this table that fell apart during transit. Now, we have a better view, fam. There we go. Now you can see, oh, now you can see the baits there. Right, that's going to be a little bit closer now. Right, let's just bring this in here like this. Right, that should be a bit better for you there, Famo. You might even get lucky and see a marin in there, you know. All right, that's a better camera. Let's check that out. Hey, the peacock's here. Oh, I forgot to, I need to ask him to keep the tail for that, my, for our flight tank fan. That's where we got the last one. All right, chuck that in there. Come on. Got plenty in there. Okay, famo. Oh. 
Oh, it's been very hot here, people. Okay. Um, oh, and how, how is your brother now, Larry? Jackson, Merry Christmas and a Happy New Year, mate. Right. Okay. Oh no, come on. Whew. Now people, we're live streaming from a uh, farm that's about 350 kilometres south of Perth, okay? And uh, the Warren River's that way, the Lafroy Brook's that way, and the Donnelly River's that way, okay? Uh, Big Larry man, I hope that you all um, were stronger after that, mate. And um, I'm hoping that he can uh, recover. Okay. I can't uh, recall exactly what we were referring to. But, uh, yeah, I mean, you hate seeing any of your family unwell, you know. Even the ones, like in my case, that I don't get on with. But uh... So down here, famo, we have the baits, the mariner in the water, but we've had... A couple of 35 degree days in a row. We had 42 on Sunday. I thought we'd be safe today, but no dice. Oh, Yeah, what it is, Culpa, well, my friend has a farm with a uh, license to produce marin on it. So, um, yeah, what we're doing is filling an order. Um, when COVID hit last year, it was pretty tough because everybody ceased production, so now things are getting uh, back on track again. And, you know, when you've got someone on a farm, whether it's marin or livestock or eggs or whatever, that's how they work to sell things to keep the farm going, you know? John, believe it or not, we've got people in Western Australia that have done that with carp. They've let carp go in certain rivers down here. We had one guy years ago that got on the radio bragging how it reminded him of England, you know? It's like, really, mate? They're not native to WA, you know? Oh. I really don't know what I'd do if I bumped into someone trying to um, relocate a, um, you know, uh. a feral fish like that, you know what I mean? But seriously, they've let carp go into waterways around um, Collie, like the Wellington Dam and that sort of stuff. We're actually going to be doing a fly fishing stream for, for carp if we can get reception there. Hello, Darkness UK. How are you, mate? Yeah, that's exactly right. Foxes, the whole lot. Rats, mice. Feral cats, is that a fox there? <sighs> I 
I'm going to use that culpable. Oh dear. Yeah, a couple of the drakes were ganging up on one of the ducks. A couple of the drakes were ganging up on one of the ducks. Yeah, they do that. Yep. That's exactly right, they're ducking mad. Oh yeah. Ducks are nasty, mate. Hey, when that tail falls off that, can I have all the feathers? I'll buy them off you. Remember last time? I've still got the last one I got. Okay. Yeah, but I need another one. Yeah, 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 heaps of them. Peacock hurl is the most wonderful material. You can tie a fly out of two or three peacock hurls and catch fish with it. You know? Tonight? Oh, okay. I'll tell them to just put him over here. Yeah, yeah, fair enough. So they won't disturb what's happening over there. No worries. Hopefully it scares the marin over this yeah. way. Thank you, Bob. Yeah, they are, Sith. Yeah, geese are. <laughs> what I might do is just zoom in on the, um, the baits until they're in here. Yeah, they built a fence patch to keep the rabbits out because they destroyed everything. You know, they called it the rabbit-proof fence. And, um, yeah. Oh, dear. Oh, are they what? Oh, is it? Trying to work their way up the order. Oh, one's picked up a heap of haze walking towards them now, trying to <laughs> be the peacemaker. Yeah. Oh, this is funny, isn't it? He's got a big bunch of hay in his mouth and he's shaking his head. And... They're probably making their bed for the night. Yeah, I mean, I hear all the animosity towards Canadian geese in the States. They reckon that they, um, yeah, they're just so many of them and they excrete everywhere. And All right, fam, so look, uh, what we'll do is we'll give it another 10 or 15 minutes. And if we don't get any marin in that time, what I'll do is I'll just do some more filming off stream and then I'll put up the VOD tomorrow on the channel, okay? Well, Lawrence, I'm the least important person on the stream, mate. Seriously, these streams, when you see just the, you know, streamer doing something and not what they're doing, what's the point? You can do it yourself. You know, so yeah, I personally feel as a streamer, I'm the least important thing in the stream. This is the important stuff here. You know what I'm saying? So that's what we're doing. And I mean, we have a good community of good people from all over the world, and that's why they come in here to get acknowledged. I mean, if they wanted to get ignored, they'd just go off the stream, you know? Oh, that's exactly right, Patch. Oh, and, and, you know, John Beer, what about um, the um, blackberries that Baron Von Mueller introduced in Western Australia? They're a pest everywhere now. Nothing? Wow. Wow, unbelievable. Yeah, that's exactly right, mate. So... 
All right, famo, so what we'll do is um, we'll go from live stream mode to VOD mode. That's the beauty of YouTube, right? And then what I'll do is I'll um, upload the edited version of this live stream on how to make marin stairs, snares from the upcoming season. All right, thank you, Lawrence. I really appreciate that, mate. I'll go and have a look at that. Can't believe that we were live streaming and the goats were doing. <laughs> oh. Oh. Were you, John? Yeah, you've got to use a special type of wood killer in them and a good detergent, mate. Round up on its own won't get them. You've got to do like the um, hardwood killer as well. Man, I can't believe this. This is the first time I've ever been here. Normally we trip over them. Is that one there or is that a stick? No, that's a stick, is it? No, it's a stick. Everything's looking like one when you can't get them. We'll try and stick it out for another 10 or 15. John, we'll just see how we go, eh? Because it's still daylight, and it, these um, Samsung cameras are unbelievable, mate. Look at the picture that's putting on to YouTube with this little light. Yeah, it's unbelievable. Mm. Seriously. The puffy fish have told you something like that. Right. We'll keep going for a little while, fam. We'll just see how we go with everything, okay? Oh, really? Wow, they must have been pretty well established. Same old rule with Marin Fam. If you can see them, they can see you, so... Don't start doing any dance moves from 80s dance videos. Yeah, 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 you know what I mean? <laughs> You're trying to shovel now. Ooh, and open toed sandals. I think there's other stuff you can <laughs> patch. But the Scottish are quite industrious like that. They'll make do with lots of things. Cane toads, an un untapped resource, really. If you had someone that had never heard farm animals before and they came down for the first time here, you'd think they were killing each other. Wouldn't you? That's the turkey starting off now. Yep. Oh. And you wait, mate. I bet you the moment we turn that camera off, right, they're going to just straight in. That's how it goes. I'm going to have another drink of water. And people, I would really appreciate it if you clicked on that like button. Just let YouTube know what we're doing and that you're watching the stream. It all helps, okay? Well, that's much better. Might have to come back and do your order on the weekend, mate. But it's still going to be hot, isn't it? I mean... <laughs> Yeah. 
Is that a set of claws over there? No. Um, I have been marining before and seen what I thought was a stick moving in the water and it was actually a marin. So yeah, we have got some spots here we get them as thick as 750ml beer bottles. So thank you Ray, Merry Christmas and a Happy New Year mate. Well, they're about the only marin I've ever met in my life that don't. We use these everywhere. Some bread. <laughs> Mate, during the season, during the season, oh, there, one just shot through then. Do you see a little tuft there? That's the first one, it was a little one. Um, during the actual proper marin season at um, like Big Brook in Pemberton, right, you put pellets down, they crawl all over them, yeah. you know? Do you want to push? Thank you. You're welcome. This one is stable, the front one and the back. What's that? Which one is more stable? Um, uh, probably in the back. In the back? Yeah, it's better. Yeah, you sit in the front, it's too hard to steer. Time to get the torch out in a minute, I think. Yeah, Sith, I agree with you to a certain extent, mate, but the good thing about this stream, mate, is we're not bombarded by sound alerts, you know, and I don't push, you know, like dono goals and subscriptions and that sort of stuff here, mate. So it's about the content, which is what we're doing, okay? And, um, yeah, on YouTube, YouTube has much better picture quality and a lot less pressure, you know where I'm coming from? And, I mean, the other thing is, too, with YouTube... Um, you know, unlike other platforms, we can set the values of our memberships and that. So, you know, that's why, yeah, I, everybody knows that I wasn't happy with the direction that the old platform was going. And rather than accept it, I decided to make a decision to move on, which I've done. And I don't regret it at all. You know, and the good people that have come across and all the new members of the community, which is what it's all about, they're the ones that want to be here. So, you know. We just do what we do. So, um, yeah, and I mean, um, I actually prefer the chat on here as well, but it'll lay improve in time. Now, it's starting to get a little bit darker. There's actually a formula a science to, scientist developed where they count the certain number of uh, clicks from a cricket in a certain time frame and they can actually tell the temperature. Yeah, that's right, Sith, but you know, 
we've all got to start somewhere, bud. And, um, you know, at least on this one, it doesn't have, um, yeah, at least on this platform, maybe, I mean, we're able to provide good content, you know, which is what it's about. So, yeah, and I mean, the one thing that did really impress me was the fact that we can set how much we want our memberships to be. So, you know, whereas on the other one, you know what I mean? Like, I, I don't really think you get a lot for um, what you pay for, mate, in my personal opinion. Okay, and I mean, all it does is creates hype and people spend more and more money, you know? And uh, yeah, anyway. Oh, thanks, Sith. Nothing? Not one? Hey? One came up to the end one, but he was um, incredibly steady. Oh, was he? Okay, well, that's good. That means they're starting to come in. All right, fam. So what's happened is... The first marins come up out of the deeper water further down, so we shouldn't be too far off here, so let's just sit back and wait, eh? Oh, here comes that beautiful, cool breeze. Was it a fairly good-sized one? Okay. Oh, three to a kilo is pretty good. You know, in the... um. Uh, okay, that's good. Yeah, the best thing that ever happened um, on the old platform was when the leak came out, fam, because there were so many uh, people on there screaming poverty. And when the list came out of what they actually earn, it was like, really, you know? I mean, um, with our list in two years, I mean, we had people saying that I was making 20 grand a month with the streams we were doing, you know? And we had that standout stream where we had nearly 27,000 people on there. But um, yeah, in two years, it was 34, eight, eight, seven or something. It was 6,634th on the list. And, um, you know, some people were making a lot of money that were screaming poverty on there, you know? And uh, yeah, that's the best thing that ever could have happened because after that, there was a whole new direction that took place. So, you know. What I'm going to do is I'm going to go and try and snare one down the end and bring it back to show you because we've got to fill this order for uh, my friends as well. We need about, I think, 10 kilos of them. So. Okay.
The only problem is if I move too far from the car with our reception, what I'll do is I'm just gonna zoom in on the baits, right? Just keep an eye on the baits for me and just let you know if Marin come up to the baits, okay? You should be able to see them. Let's have a look. There we go. What I'll do is I'm just gonna zoom in on the baits, right? And just see if you see Marin start crawling out and going over the baits, fair? Okay. Let me just get out of your way for a second. I'm just going to charge the phone. Right. Right, this. Right, just keep an eye on those baits for us. All right. And I'll be back in a second. Let's just make sure that... Yep, good work. You just keep an eye on those baits for us, fam. Thank you very much to the 32 people that are in here. I'm going to see if I can get one for you. Okay, Famo, this is what we're going to do, right? This is the plan, okay? What we're going to do is this. Okay, I'm going to zoom in on the baits. Like that. Right, and what I'm going to do is we're just going to focus on the baits and I'm going to see... What you'll see is you'll see the little snouts of the marin coming out of the water, 
Right. Hello, Martin S. How are you, bud? Yeah, I hear what you're saying, Sith. But the thing is, mate, by being a partnered streamer on the old um, platform, you know, for me to stick around after what I said, I would have been a hypocrite. That's why I left. You know, I'm not putting up with that. Martin S, UK, Merry Christmas and a Happy New Year, mate. Thank you very, very much for tuning in. Look, people... I'd really appreciate it if you click on that like icon. Just let Twitch know what we're doing. Okay? And then um, that way it will just notify them that we are live streaming and people are watching the stream. Okay? Now, we have had a couple of marin come up to the other baits. So they shouldn't be too far away here. Okay? Okay? Worst comes to worst, I'll just get the scoop net out. Thank you, Johnny. Well, that's right, Sith. I mean, if it was a member-based platform and they differentiated people's ages, it'd be a different story, but it's not, you know? And I mean, oh, I just, I can't believe that um, a lot of people haven't been more outspoken about it, you know? We've had three very hot days here in a row, famo, so... Just need one to come up and feed fam, that's all. I hope everybody enjoyed their Christmas and they also have a great new year with their family and loved ones, okay? And I hope you enjoy your holiday season. Hey Ninja Man, how are you mate? Well, it's, it's very interesting that you point that out mate, because I'm the same. You know, and um, yeah, it just gets frustrating mate. Really Ray, that's hot, wow. Martin, thank you very, very much for... Uh, Renewing your membership, mate. Oh, that's right, Culp, you know. I mean, you know, with all the mods, we haven't always, like, agreed on things, but at least we've worked through it, you know what I'm saying? So, oh, excellent, Ninja. Martin, thank you very much for renewing your membership, mate. And, I mean, this is another classic example, fam, right? Um, I'll be straight up with you, okay? Um... I wasn't comfortable with what was getting charged on the old platform for memberships and that. That's why I've made ours three ninety nine, okay? Because I think that's fair for what you get. Because when you think about it, it doesn't matter what platform you're on, you don't get much for it, okay? So yeah, and I mean, Martin, thank you for renewing, and also Lowy and anyone else that has as well, okay? All right, fam. I'm just going to go and try and get um, a Marin, really. <laughs> Thank you. 
All right, so just keep an eye on these. Right, just keep an eye on these. Okay, so what will happen is when they come up and try and feed on these, I'm trying to get them to come out of the water with their crowns and their claws, and you will see them, okay? Yeah, that's exactly right, Sith. Brucey, hello, Brucey. How are you, mate? Thank you very much for renewing, Bruce. And look, people, um, we've had great people that have come across from the other platform. And, um, you know, the other thing is too, the other good thing about live streaming on this platform is the numbers are real, okay? So you a uh, West Brom fan or a Birmingham fan? Hello, Brucey. We're just trying to snare some marin, mate, but we've had some scorching days over 100 degrees Fahrenheit. I'll be back in a minute, fam, mate. Keep an eye on those baits for us. There's one small one in there. Hello, cows. Hello girls. <laughs> oh, some absolutely tiny ones in. Oh, oh, all right. All right, Famo. The mariner here. Okay, fam, now the mariner here, right? I just scared a monster further up, okay? So they're just starting to come in, all right? Let's just be a bit more patient and we should be able to snare one. I'm gonna show you how to snare them from the luxury of a chair. This is how easy it can be when you do your things right. How'd you go, Ross? Yeah, but that's exactly right, culpable, you know, but you know, it usually works the other way. All right, so there's a big marin on the end bait over here, right, which means that we're not far off. Luckily, we've got these Samsung S20s. Oh, it's right, Patch. Oh, did you, Ross? <laughs> yeah, 
Yeah, that's right, Brucey. They are only found in fresh water. They're not a lobster, they're a crayfish. So lobsters are in salt water. Or is it the other way around? Uh, well, we call them, yeah. Yeah, Marinade, um, they can grow up to about three pounds six, Bruce. And they're a top seven delicacy in the world. Oh, okay, so there's one on the end bait fam, but it's still a little bit too light to get them. So what we'll do is we'll just wait till they come in here. Okay. Yeah, the thing is, Bruce, you can actually make a snare to catch them with, mate. So what we did, all right, I'll just show you the method to the madness, Bruce. So what we did today, and we did this live on stream, uh, one of these locking carabanas, right? We cable tied it and then arrow dyed it on top, okay? A little bit of a Mohican there. And then what you do is you cut a loop of 80 pound wire to a certain length. So this is what we do, mate. And this is how we make them. I don't know how other people make them, right? Oh, probably not this one now that it's been glued, damn it. Let me try the other one. Whoopsie. There we go. I'll sort that out with a lighter later. So what you do is you put that through the carabana eye like that. Okay. Fold that down. Slide that over here. Put that in the bottom. Lock it into place. Like that. Boom. Oops. But first, <laughs> that's how you lock them in, right? So when you want to load it properly though, no, that one or the other one? No, we'll go this one. Yeah, we'll go this one. All right, so you put it through the eye, undo that, put that over there like that, slide it in, All right? Clamp that down. And then what you have is you have a loop that forms, see? So when the marins sit there, they'll face you. They've always got their tails facing the middle of the waterway. And when they go through, you push this down behind the tail so it opens out. The marin put their tails in there and boom, you snare them. And you lift them out of the water. Well, that's the method to the madness anyway. We'll use one of the new ones we made. Oh, okay, famo. Hey Ninja, oh sort of mate. Merry Christmas and a Happy New Year Extreme. Good to see you in here mate. I'm just gonna see if we can get a marin. Oh, look at the size of that bugger fam. All right. Now famo. We have got a big marin over there, right? It's on the end baits in the slightly deeper water. I didn't think that the water was this hot here, but it must be. So let me just see if I can get this other one. It's still a bit early though, you know?
Yeah, we normally uh, like fish for them at night, so this is we've got to wait for nightfall, obviously. But this time of year, they should come in early, especially with this order that we've got to fill. There's one that I just spooked in there. Bugger. So, what happened, fam? There was a big marin just in here. You can just see the cloud of uh, like uh, dirt and silt. They're just starting to come in now. So let's just uh, sit down and chill out. Crypto, how are you, bud? What's going on? You well? <laughs> Good, Cal. How are you, mate? Merry Christmas and a Happy New Year, Cal. It's been pretty quiet, mate. We're trying to get Marin. There's only one problem. We're doing everything right, but there's no Marin. Just got to be patient, mate. That's all. Yeah, that's what it was, Patch. That one would have been easily about a pound with the ripples when it shot off. So they're there and they're just starting to come in now. Normally you are uh, marin at night. You very rarely get them during the day, you know. And the worst thing you can do is panic. You just got to wait. Right, so they've come right in now. The water's cooled down. Okay, and now we just got to wait for them to get in close enough to put a snare behind them. When you bait properly, fam, they are sitting ducks. They'll just sit there and look at you, you know, and you'll get the torch. <laughs> oh, well done, Cal. They are very jitterish, fam. Like, very, very jitterish tonight. Hope you have a quiet New Year's too, Cal. People, please do me a favour and click on that like icon, okay? Let YouTube know what we're doing here, trying to achieve on the channel. Yeah, they're just starting to come in now, fam. Let me just get this on here. Get that charged up. We'll go to the small one.
Okay, Femo. All right, fam, we're going to start to come in now. Uh, on those other baits, there were three marin. Right. Now, let's have a look. I like this torch, it's not too bright, fam. Just a nice dull torch. Right. Just got to be patient. That's it. Just got to be patient, Famo. Wait till they come up. Just got to be patient. That's all. <laughs> Communicate with the goats. <laughs> uh... That better not be a sheep with a scuba tank. I'm telling you. Now, Famo, keep an eye on these baits. Hey, Adrian, how are you, mate? Merry Christmas and a Happy New Year. Um, we're not fe really fishing with a rod and reel. 
what we're doing is we're using snares to try and snare marin. Now, marin are, um, are active at night, so it is a bit early, but with the daylight that we've got left, we should be okay for a little while, you know? How was your Christmas, Adrian? Did you have a good time? Now, just give me a second, famo. What I'm going to do is... I'm just going to duck down to that other bait. I've got to get one marin at least to show you, but it's still a bit early, you know? So... I'll be back in a minute. Excellent, Adrian. Glad to hear it. Only took three hours. There you go, fam. Persistence pays off. This is what we came here for. This is a West Australian Marin. Now, there is a correct way to grab these. You've got to grab them from underneath like that, or they will nip you, push their claws together. Right, as you can see, they are a very large uh, crayfish. Beautiful, beautiful to eat. Okay, so this was on one of the other baits. Now, okay, to see that. Now this one is absolutely covered in lice and that sort of stuff. So what you do is you've got to purge them when you get home. Do not put your fingers in the claws or they will get you. Okay, so in terms of legal size, this one here is... Uh, what is it? Nope, just under. Right, so yeah, that's how big they grow. As you can see, that's my hand span there. All right. Okay, so what we're going to do is we're going to put this little one back. All right. Righto, bud. See you, mate. Okay, so now let me, show, let me see if I can show you how to uh, snare one live, okay? That's the plan, fam. This is actually a good little torch. It's not too bright, okay? And you can shine them on the marin without them getting scary and scuttering off, you know? So what you got to do is you shine your torch in the water tr trying to see their tails, okay, and then when you see their tails what you do is you put the snare behind it like this, I'll just give you a little crash course, 
you put the snare behind the marin like that and you push down on a little bit and what it does is it flattens it out and then you shine the torch in front of the marin like that so just say we use my um, sunglasses right so if that's the marin what you do like the marin are always facing you on the edge okay so what you do is you'll shine out here like this at the back and with the halo you'll see the tail so then what you do is you put your snare behind the marin and you press down on it like that see how it opens up then you shine to the front of the marin the marin will go backwards and boom you lift it up and you've got your marin the good thing about using a fiberglass pole is they're quite heavy and they're quite stiff a lot of people will bounce or use an old fishing rod that's very bendy as the marin comes up and then it drops with the uh, fishing rod bending it opens the loop up and they get off so these fiberglass poles you pick them up for about 15 dollars from elders or, or your rural stores right as i said i think a seven dollar caravana clip there that's about eight bucks for 10 meters so you'll get oh, 40 marin snares out of it just some cheap cable ties about six dollars for your um uh araldite okay and then you've got your little functional snare to catch your man with okay i'll see if i can get you a big one thelema no they're marin different no yabbies are different um Okay, yabbies are different. Yabbies are introduced from the eastern states. A yabby that big will kill a marin that big because two-thirds of the body is virtually in the claw and yabbies can actually reach around and grab their tail and they are quite savage, especially during their spawning time, you know. Right, so now remember, fam, stealth, okay, patience, all that sort of stuff. Don't put on sunglasses at night, Jim. Anybody think it's another Corey Hart like music video? Right, that was for all the Canadian members there. Cod bites, how are you, mate? Welcome. <laughs> hey, cod bites, how are you? Welcome to the stream, mate. We're not actually chasing fish tonight. We're chasing a giant freshwater crayfish called a marin. Um, we had a guy at school we called marin because he had meat in his tail and shit for brains. But anyway. Now everything's in our favour, famo. Because night is upon us. Right, the marin can't see us. And with our torch, we can see them. Right. All right, so we, some fish in there. Yep. Yeah. All right. I'm just going to go up to the other baits again, and I'll be back, fam. Unfortunately, if I pull too far forward, okay, we won't um, be able to get signal, and the stream will drop out. Thanks, Johnny. I'll see if I can get us a big one.
That was a monster. Ooh. Bastard, missed him. There's a big one here, Mark. Uh, there was one that didn't fit into the snare there. Just my luck. The, oh. All right. How much longer have you got, mate? Five or ten? I carry hands fit all the animals, so. <laughs> you want me to come down more often? <laughs> <laughs> oh, is that one there? Nope, I don't think so. Nope, nope, nope. No, that's new out of the packet. Yeah, I know, but... I know, but these aren't actually too bad, believe it or not. Oh, the other. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. You've got to be a good person and a streamer to do that, mate. I've got the good person down, Pat, but the streaming's a bit tough. This is actually pretty good, because straight out of the packet, it's not too bright. And I was shining straight on their snout, and they weren't moving, you know, so. No, no, it's not. Remember the old dolphin torches? We'd have to turn them on and run the battery down for a couple of hours till they were dim enough to, like, use for marin, you know. Oh, not a fish in sight, bugger. Right. The dog's calling you for dinner, mate. I've probably got about half an hour. Oh, did you see that one? I've got about a half hour max, mate. Oh, well, I think it's going to just start getting a little bit dark now. Yeah, then I've got to still... Uh... Yeah, I saw that. Whereabouts, near the stump? I'll cast out a spinner, see if I can catch it. And what that'll do... Righto fam, so what I've done, oh there he is, look at the size of that bugger. Come back, all is forgiven. Yeah, oh, they were all over that before like bloody mice. Yeah, that's the trouble, so you're going to run out of light. Oh, that's, oh there, it was one there. There was one there and there was one here. How deep is it near the stump? I'll have a cast, see if we can get it. Because your trout now are pretty big, aren't they? They're like, yeah. what, four pound, three pound? Oh, I don't know, anything that's in there um, would be 40 centimetre. Plus, because you put in triploids, didn't you? Uh, yeah. Yeah, so they've had their gonads zapped. All right, famo, so this is good. We're probably going to run out of light. What I'm going to do is I'm going to sit down here and I'm going to wait for these marin to turn up and then I'm going to show you how to snare one because I've just scared off two of them. Right. So they were coming in here. So this is when you do your preparation, right, you can plonk a seat down next to the water and you can get them to come up to your snare. So, yeah, there were three marin crawling over the one bait before. Well, like puppies fighting over a tennis ball, you know? But it didn't help us earlier, did it? Oh, yeah, that's right. 
Just like you said, it must have been the heat. Yep. The poor buggers will start going red, Mark. Yeah. Hey? Yeah, they'll be young half Yeah, I certainly am, Ant. But we just got to wait for a few bigger ones to come in, mate. Oh, what happened there? What happened there? John, sorry, John, I hit the wrong button, mate. All right, fam, I've just seen the water move over here, right? I don't know, um, Theo. Yeah, we do, um, we do. I've got chicken pellets down here. See that? That's all chicken pellets. It's going to be a little while. Oh, no. It was right here again. <laughs> it was right here again in close. Bugger. No, oh, yeah. Just toying with our emotions, Mark. <laughs> um, over here with the blue manna crabs. They uh, taste quite nice, and um, a lot of people like them to eat them. So, oh, was that another one in there? So what you do, fam, is when you're waiting for Marin, like I said, very small steps. Oh, it's a bit murky in here, isn't it? And don't make too many ripples. Yeah, after I got nipped by that one in here that time, mate, I don't like going in your dam. Is that another one in there, or is that what's that wave? Okay, makes two of us. <sighs> yeah, I got conjunctivitis for Christmas. Yeah, awesome. No, well, that's right. Interesting, pineapple flavoured boilies, really? In the um, UK, they've got this introduced um, crayfish called a signal crayfish that hammers their um, native crayfish, the little ones. Oh, okay. And he was using pineapple flavoured baits. <laughs> then, well, yeah, there's no rules to it. Well, That's right. <sighs> Everything looks like a marin in the water when you're trying to get them, doesn't it? Oh, that's all right. We'll work around it. Once a year, you eat them flat out, eh? Interesting. It's still quite bright. Look how bright that looks with the minimal light we've got. So, up, right. that's right. I'm just going to go over to those other baits. All right, fam, just give us a second. I'm going to go over to the other baits and see if there's any on the other ones to show you. By that time, I'm hoping these ones have come back. Okay. We'll use that one. Like a tennis player trying to pick the best racket. 
Only they're professionals. I'll go up the end and come back, Mark. Don't, don't. Oh. oh, there's one here too. Don't move. I know, mate, but it's worth it, isn't it? Three fifty, I'm, and I'm getting the small ones. Oh no, goat! Oi, really, really, out! Come on, get out of there! No, out! Here, look, Marin. Yeah, come on, out! Move, move, go! Take your kids with you. Pardon the pun. <laughs> it's not daycare. Hey, away from there. No, not the, not the tar light. All right, famo, we got another one. There we are. So this is what happens. They're a nocturnal um, crustacean or crayfish, lobster. Yeah, marin. So they are nocturnal and they start coming out at night. Right, I'm actually going to put this one back because I feel sorry for it. <laughs> I do. I think I'm. I don't know. Wait, wait. And that's what they do, you snare them behind the tail. Can I just get you to shine that on here so I can take it off without getting nipped? Right. That's good video footage. Sure is. There you go, famo. Now with these, you've got to pick them up underneath here. See how they try and nip you? Right. And because this is a non-releasing snare, okay, and look, we've got two Marin and the snare is still not like new all right now at wholesale these are 60 dollars a kilo okay so we've just paid for all the snares about twice over i'll put this back you know i'll just chuck it in here all right so i'm just going to put this in reverse right like so you yeah bruce you gotta be a bit he tried to go back to shore Oh, I just, no, oh. <laughs> was, oh, was he? I uh, could have too, couldn't I? All right, let's have a look, Famo. Look, goat. I don't know how to put this to you, right? You've already cost me two marin, and I mean, we've just met. We're not that close. Do you get what I'm putting down? <laughs> yeah, that's it. Take that option. All right. Yeah, that was a big one, Mark, wasn't it? No, he wouldn't have. All right, fam, so what I'm going to do... How light is it and how bright is it? Let's have a look. Oh, that's still not too bad, even though we're tripping over in the dark. Yeah, that's right, Sky Quake Warrior. Um, I've seen Marin. What's the biggest one you've seen? Um, just under 600. Yeah, I've, I've got them before out of the... Um, I've caught them before that were probably the length of that yellow part just on the head so the tar was out here they grow huge like i said the biggest one i've heard of was about three pounds six ounces in the old scar all right hey it's uh the sheep gang mate coming through <laughs> coming through coming through right yeah, 
No, you're not going to get one. Right. Oh, there he is, big one. So what I've done is I've turned the torch away. Right. I hate it when they walk into the beam. You know? No, he'll be back. I'm going to give this about 10 minutes. Right, what we'll do is we'll give it about 10 minutes and let him to come right in on the baits and then we'll snare one. I'll check the other ones in the meantime. This is West Australian as it gets, fam. Yep. No. Didn't even see him. All right, so they're starting to come in now, which is good. They are a nocturnal um, crustacean. About another 10 minutes mark and we're done, eh? Wait till you see the size of this one if I can get it, mate. No. Oh, just once they go too deep, I can't see the snare. All right, righto famo, so we've probably got about 10 minutes of light, oh they are mate, oh This is a great West Australian tradition, fam. The traditional, um, the tr traditional beer feast is fresh marin cooked over a campfire. Although nowadays you're not allowed to do that, obviously with the um, fire restrictions and cold beer and fresh bread, you know. All right. All right. I think we've got one more shot at this. Yeah, I know I saw it, mate, just as I... Rightio, fam, we've got one more shot at this. We'll give it 10 more minutes. Right. <laughs> oh, don't worry, Ninja, I'm expecting that. Yeah, for sure, Skyquake Warrior. If you go to Western Australia and order Marin at a restaurant, you wouldn't get much change out of what, 40 or 50 bucks? Yeah, about $50 a marin meal. That's why so many people try and catch them. Us included. You'll have hundreds out here tonight.
the Yeti. <laughs> That's what they think's marining. Oh, a culpable, a freshly made loaf of bread, right, and freshly cooked marin between two bits of, like, bread from that loaf. Nothing better. Lots of butter, mix some garlic through it, you know what I mean? So, yeah, it's all good. What's that light on the fence over there? Oh, really? What does that do? Is in... Oh, really? Oh no, it never does, mate. It's but that's the thing, mate. You, when you want to try it, you've got to do it, don't you? You know. Yep. Right. Right. Let me just see if I can get this big one. I'm just happy we were able to show everyone some marin. I've just got to show them with the snare, you know, but I just can't move up here because we'll get no reception. Maybe because that's shallower, like you said, with the water, but. We'll give it five minutes and then we're done. Oh. Oh, no. oh. Well, that's good to know they're in here, Mark. I stumbled. Right, and some rocks slid down the water, and then, boof, three of them. <laughs> oh, really? Yep. Yeah, you did right there. Yep. I don't think they're coloured, so they're just not, they're not hungry for them. Yeah. Maybe if they sort of got accustomed to them, they would be, yeah? Yeah. All right. Well, see this here? That's still showing like about six or seven o'clock light on the thing. Yeah. I'll just finish this off. Righto, famo. This is our last sweep. We're going to give it five minutes. Let's have a look. How, is it still light enough or not? Oh, it's still not too bad. Yeah, they are. When they... they <laughs> Mate, there's nothing worse than the sound of a snake taking a frog, is there? Hey? Oh, you hear it squealing and... Oh, God. All right, fam, mate. So, once again... Rightio. We've got one in here really close, fam. I'm just going to try and snare it. Where? 
great. They're not meant to see me in the dark. Look at me. Oh, come on. Ninja, thank you very much for the $10 tip, mate. That is greatly appreciated, mate. Oh, who was that from? Oh, happy festive season to you too, Scotty. Thank you very, very much, mate. All right, let's get a marin now, fam. Oh, let's try to anyway. I'm not having a good run, Mark. Not as light as I used to be. Light. Bug it off. And see that? Oh, like now that it's darker, I had the halo, right? I just saw his tail and I lifted it up and he was gone. Cheeky bugger. Yeah, way too smart for, well, for me anyway. Oh, hopefully. Nah. Oh dear. And with LED lights, they don't go dull. They either work or they don't, you know. Look how many mosquitoes I've got on here. <laughs> Today's stream should have been sponsored by Aerogard. Oh yeah. And I'm a rather large target. Mosquitoes are hungrier than the marin. Yeah. Might have to feed the mosquitoes to the marin, I think. There you go, you big bugger. I'll get you on the way back. Rightio. Let's have a look. There's usually two on this bait. Oh, don't close up. All right. I'll tell you what though, mate. Now, where's this bait? There it is. I think so. Oh. Oh, can't see the snare. Yeah, he's. Oh. Righto, fam. There we go. We got another one. This is going to get let go as well. Can I get you to give us a hand with the light? They won't see us in the. Thank you. All right. Yeah, they don't get. They don't uh, sort of forgive you anymore when they nip you nowadays, do they? The funniest ones is ones that pick them up for the first time front on. <laughs> All right, famo. There's our third one. Look, we've had a few really hot days in a row here, which has affected the uh, marining. Okay, we're going to put this one back. 
This is as Western Australian as it gets. I'd like to thank everyone for their support today. Okay. Thank you, Scotty. Uh, bamboozled, what's the depth of that dam in the middle? Eight metres. Eight metres in the middle. So there are fish in here. We'll do some fly fishing here next time. Our main concern was trying to get reception. There you go, fam. A beautiful West Aussie Marin that's going to go back. Go and fight the others. Tell them it's good fun. See you, bud. Oh, he's gone into the shallows. Why couldn't the others do that? All right. All right, famo. Oops, sorry. Thank you very, very much. What I'm going to do is go through and uh, um, redo the VOD, okay? And I'm going to do highlights of the stream from tonight. And I'm also going to tell you all where it was um, streamed. So stay safe and stay well. Keep being awesome. Thanks for your support. And uh, see you next time.